Hello, my name is Sean, uh, and today I'll be introducing a method to modify reinforcement learning environments such that agents acting in those environments are explicitly encouraged to find trajectories that have a small fractional dimension. This is useful in the context of meshing. Meshing here refers to the process of building up a set of discrete states that can accurately represent a continuous dynamical system. This can be used for approximate dynamical programming, for the analysis of robustness properties of the system, and for verification at runtime that the system is in an explored part of the state space. In general, more accurate meshes require exponentially more states to be added to the mesh. Generally, the rate of growth, the exponent which describes the rate of growth for these meshes, uh, is much smaller than the topological dimension of the space that the mesh is embedded in. Tools from fractal geometry can quantify exactly how this mesh size changes as the mesh grows more accurate, namely different notions of the fractional or fractal dimension. In this work, we use something closely related to a box counting dimension, which we call the mesh dimension. This quantity is expensive and error-prone to commute algorithmically, and so instead we introduce a lower and upper bound for this dimension, which we use for the training. Uh, we call this the lower mesh dimension and the upper mesh dimension, respectively. Uh, in this work, we show that these measures of fractal dimensionality can be inserted into a reinforcement learning environment via reward post-processing. That is, we take the sum of rewards obtained during a given episode and divide that sum by a measure of fractional dimensionality for the, for the entire trajectory of that episode. In this work, we test this modified learning schema um, on a subset of the Mojoko locomotion environments. These are a set of toy problems which capture many of the challenges um, inherent to lake locomotion. And in this work, we use augmented random search as our uh, test algorithm, which is known to perform well on these environments, although uh, any on-policy uh, reinforcement learning environment can be used with this modified training. Uh, so the results shown here uh, show that we can, in fact, lower these uh, fractional dimensionality by uh, significant margins. And the total return we get, uh, that is the sum of uh, rewards during a given episode, is slightly smaller than the unmodified agents. However, uh, still, for our purposes, more than acceptable. Um, all the agents are still learning, walking, and running gates, and they still obtain high rewards in these environments. So let's zoom in to the cheetah here, uh, which had the most dramatic differences. So we can see here different plots for the mesh size versus the mesh resolution. And we can see that for the lower and upper mesh dimension, um, not only is the slope of this line uh, less steep than uh, the unmodified agent, which is the fractal dimension reducing, but also for any given mesh size, um, or sorry, any given mesh resolution, the mesh size is also significantly smaller. So what exactly is going on here? What is this happening? Um, so let's take a video of the cheetah. So on the left here, we have it without the post-processing. On the right, we have it with the mesh dimension post-processor. Um, and we can see, at least to me, to my naked eye, uh, these look almost identical. It looks like the same gate. Um, However, upon closer inspection, we find that both of these uh, gates have a quasi-periodic limit cycle um, of period 5. And what we find is that when we overlay this video every 5 frames, we find that uh, without the post-processing, uh, this sort of uh, periodic gate is very loose. Uh, so it's sort of in the same part of the gate every 5 frames. However, the exact angle of all the joints is uh, significantly different. We can see this here with the overlay. Um, however, after the post-processing, it actually learns a very tight limit cycle. It's able to get into almost exactly the same configuration um, every five frames, uh, which does reduce the dimensionality significantly for uh, the system. Um, so we also, you know, given this, we want to verify that these results hold when we added noise to the system at runtime. So this is not adding noise during train time, but just taking the uh, normal trained environments and adding noise to them to make sure that the mesh dimensions are in fact lower, and indeed they are. Um, we also found by happy accident that uh, these systems are also more robust to different kinds of disturbances than the unmodified agent. So we push these systems around with different um, external forces applied to them, and we also applied noise both to their actions and to the observations they see during a given episode, and we find that the failure rates for these agents are significantly smaller um, when trained with this mesh dimension reward as opposed to the normal reward function. So, uh, future work, where do we want to go with this? So, we want to actually apply these mesh-based tools that we mentioned in the introduction um, to these systems, um, uh, now that we can apply them more accurately. And, and this has already been done, and we submitted that work to ICRA 2021. Um, we also want to answer the question of, are these new limit cycles actually attractive? That is, if we um, perturb the system from its sort of newfound limit cycle, will it uh, you know, return to it? And preliminary results suggest that, uh, yes, this is the case, but we have not published this work yet. Um, and this work also suggests that these mesh-based tools can now be applied to higher dimensional systems than had previously been possible. And so that's another direction of future work, is to scale these up to um, higher dimensional systems than the Majoka locomotion environments. Um, so with that, I just want to say uh, thank you. Um, and yeah, thank you for your time.